we're going to walk through the steps of creating a Google Merchant Center account. Now, you only need a Google Merchant Center account if you have an e-commerce website and you sell physical products through your website so that people can go onto your website, purchase products, and receive them in the mail or somehow physically get them after placing their order online. That's the only kind of website which can run a Google Shopping campaign, and the only reason you need a Google Merchant Center account is to feed products into your Google Shopping campaign. So the way the whole process works is obviously you have your website with your products on your website and you build a feed using the product data from your website. You send that feed to the Google Merchant Center account following Google specific parameters and categorizing things correctly. And then from your Google Merchant Center account, you send that product information over to your Google Shopping campaign, which is in your AdWords account. So let's go ahead and create a Google Merchant Center account now. I'm just going to search for uh, Google Merchants, easiest way to get there. Click on the top result here. And there we go. This is the opening page for the Google Merchant Center account. And I have not yet created an account using this uh, Google account here. So I'm going to go ahead and sign up. And it will take us to this page where it's going to ask us some information about our business, about our website. I'm just going to use sample information for our make-believe umbrella store. So first we'll select a country. I'll select United States, then put in the name of your store, I'm just going to say example store, and then put your website URL, and you need to include the HTTP or HTTPS, um, like that, www.example.com. And you need to hit that checkbox there if your site contains adult products as defined by Google's policy, which you can read there. And for most websites, that won't be an issue. And then it'll put uh, contact details right here. I'm just going to put some blank information in there. And they've already auto-filled our uh, Gmail address because we're using this Gmail account, this Google account, to create this Merchant Center account. You might as well select those two options there for updates and surveys, but it doesn't really matter whether you do or not. You also have the option to add a contact for technical issues or contact for customer service issues. If you want to, that's fine. No requirement. I'm going to skip that. Let's go ahead and hit continue now. And this takes us to the terms and conditions. You can read that, agree to the terms and conditions, continue. And then it takes us here. Now, we can't actually claim this URL because someone has already claimed it in another Merchant Center account, which is not surprising. Example.com is a pretty obvious one for somebody to claim. Um, so we'll go ahead and skip this step here and move on into the Merchant Center account. And the way that uh, verification works is Google needs you to verify that you actually own your domain so that you have the authority to claim your domain in the Merchant Center account. And there are a couple ways to verify it, um, and Google will, will give you all the options, list all the options here. Here, let me go ahead and click on Fix It here, and it, um, it would give you options here if it was a URL which had not already been claimed by somebody else. The easiest way to verify your URL is Google gives you what they call a meta tag. You can install just that simple meta tag on your home page. It's not something customers can see, it's just installed in the back end of your home page. And then Google's robots will crawl your website, they'll see that tag, and that tells them that you have the authority to edit your website, which means you own your website, and then they'll verify your Merchant Center account. Once your Merchant Center account is verified, then you can um, you know, move forward with uploading your feed, sending your product information over to Google Shopping, and making money off of your product listing ads. Let me give you a quick tour of the Merchant Center account so that you can understand what the different options are and kind of feel your way around. So obviously this is a dashboard here. This tells you um, how many feeds you have, tells you how many paid clicks you're getting from your Google Shopping campaign, and might have some other notifications down here once you start running. The Diagnostics tab tells you a lot of great information about um, any issues or the fact that you don't have any issues in your data feeds. So there are kind of three levels that it talks about. First is the account level. Obviously right now there is a, uh, an error here, a warning. We have not linked an AdWords account to Merchant Center account, so it's telling us that right there, and we can fix that in a minute. Um, then it would also talk to you about feeds. Say there was an issue with uploading a feed, it would tell you about that right there in this, this option. And then under items, it will give you information about problems with specific items in your feed. So maybe some of your products are missing information about shipping, or maybe they're missing proper categorization, or whatever the case may be. It'll tell you about that right here. And then here, in this big box right here, once you start to upload a feed, it will show you a graph of... Um, 
your daily history and it'll show you kind of day by day how many products you have approved, how many are disapproved, how many are pending review, so you can get a sense for kind of what your product feed is doing. And if you see a jump in, uh, say, disapproved products, you can take a look at your data and figure out what the problem is and fix it. API Diagnostics, this here is only relevant if you are sending information through Google's API, which is a pretty advanced technique which uh, most Google Shopping users do not use. You probably won't need to use this either, but if you are using it, that's where you would go. Then this is where you would create a feed and I'll show you what that looks like. So you can test a feed or you can create a standard feed and um, in this case we'd create a products feed and you'd select your country and put in a feed name. You know, let's, let's do that. Let's go as far as we can here without actually having a feed. You've got your content language is English. We'll name it uh, feed number one. Continue. Then there's three different ways that you can upload your feed. If you want, you can actually use Google Sheets, which is Google's version of Excel, to um, create a feed of your products and send the information to Google. It's That's a pretty manual process. I wouldn't recommend that in most cases unless you have a very small number of products which don't get updated very frequently, but that's an option. You can do scheduled fetches. So, for example, you can host your feed on your website or with a third party, a feed management solution, and then schedule automated updates. Or you can manually update your feed. So maybe you create an Excel file or an XML file and you can upload that manually through that option there. Now, what... Um, what my agency does for our clients is we use a third-party feed management solution which allows us to have a, a lot of um, editing abilities with the product data because an important part of running successful Google Shopping campaigns is optimizing your product titles, optimizing the information in your, in your descriptions, etc. to uh, perform best in Google Shopping, just like you would optimize text ads and keywords. So that's what we do. We use a third-party tool. You don't have to do that, but that definitely um, can make your life a lot easier and can make your performance a lot better. Um, and then we would say we did a scheduled fetch here. We could continue, and then you could set up your fetch, uh, what time to do it each day or uh, weekly or monthly. Um, I recommend daily. Google likes fresh data, so even if you haven't made any change to your product data, just go ahead and upload it daily so Google knows it's as fresh as possible, and that may help with your ranking to some extent. And then you can put your file URL in here if you're hosting this on your website, um, and then save it and, and so forth and so on. And then once we saved it, it would upload the, um, the file here, and you could see the history of when it was last uploaded, how many products were in the feed, so forth and so on. Let me cancel that. Then you can go to products, and once we added a feed, this is where you'd find information about your products. Now, this is really hard to search. Uh, it's, it's kind of annoying. Really, the only way to search your products is by your ID, your item ID, which is not, uh, not very intelligent <laughs> from my perspective. Um, but anyway, it would show you a list of your products and some different information about them. And honestly, Google Shopping as a whole in the Merchant Center is... Uh, it, one of the more advanced features of Google in that the interface is not very intuitive. Um, it's, it's very technical. It does require some technical understanding of just how it works and how to meet policies and how to send information to Google in the way that Google wants to receive it. Um, so Google Shopping, if you're going to run a lot of Google Shopping, you're either going to need to do a lot of uh, manual research yourself, figuring things out and learning the, the process and the system, or you'd want to partner with a, a partner, an agency, to handle that for you. Um, just go down here to assortment. This is a pretty new feature from that Google offers. It will actually recommend some different products that you might carry um, in you might consider carrying on your website based upon the products you are carrying and what people are searching for. So it's kind of an interesting way to uh, to maybe find some new products to carry on your site, depending upon what kind of advertiser you are. Then down here, got a bunch of different options for settings. Um, so this option here tells you whether or not you verified your email addresses and whatnot, and it would tell you if you verified and claimed your domain. Obviously, right now it's telling us we can't do that because this is um, not our actual domain. Um, and then website verification. This is where you'd also see could see if you have verified your website. 
SFTP and FTP. This is if you are um, transferring files via FTP and the API. Uh, you, you probably won't need to worry about the settings here. Google Cloud Storage. Um, you could upload your data files to Google servers. Not something that I typically do, but that's the option there. AdWords, this is where you can link your AdWords account and your Merchant Center account, which you do need to do. And you can see it's got our customer ID already right there because we're using the same Google account. That's the same number as is up there. And um, let's just go ahead and click the link button right now. And boom, we're linked. <laughs> Pretty painless process. Double click, you probably won't need this. This is if you're using double click, which is separate from AdWords. It's kind of a, an advanced, uh, different kind of advertising channel, which if you're interested in, in that, just go search double click and learn more about it. Uh, you will need to set tax settings. Most, uh, most small businesses are only going to have a um, physical location in one state, so you can specify taxes for your individual state or a bunch of states. Now, the super option about taxes is that Google will um, calculate them for you per state, so you don't have to spend hours calculating a million different uh, tax rates per location. You can just hit apply per state or uh, add as many states as you need, hit save. Uh, let's just say we're in Alabama. Let's go ahead and hit apply, for tax on shipping, tax rate is Google's determined rate, and save. And boom, there we go. Taxes are specified for one state. So if Google sees that someone is in Alabama when they're searching and seeing your ad, they'll show your price inclusive of tax. If someone is in any of the other states, they will not show tax with your price. You can create shipping rules down here. Uh, there are a number of different ways you can create shipping methods. You can do a single rate, so just charge a flat rate for or, or a price percentage for shipping across the country. You can create a rate table, so you can do multiple rates according to different dimensions, like the weight of your product or the size of your product or the price of your product, etc. You can do carrier calculated rates, which is super helpful. Um, Google works with FedEx, UPS, and USPS, so you can just use their calculated rates. Um, that's one of the easiest methods to use. Or you can um, set very specific rules here. And you'll need to put in your estimated transit time. It's kind of an average of how long it takes for your products typically to get to a customer. And that would be your shipping area there. You can add new users and manage user roles from the users tab. Um, automatic item updates. I definitely recommend that you turn these on. Basically, what this is, uh, is Google's robots will take a look at your website. They'll look for three things specifically. They'll look for your price on your website uh, for each product. They'll look at your availability, whether or not it's in stock or out of stock, and your condition, whether it's new, used, etc. And they'll match that up with your product data in your feed. And if it's different on your website than what is in your feed, Google will update your actual product listing ads with what's on your website. So if you're constantly updating things on your website and maybe Maybe your feed is only uploaded once per day. That's a way to uh, make sure that your data stays up to date with Google. Google loves that. Google wants that because they want to show accurate information to people when they're searching and seeing your ads. And then e-commerce platform, um, there are some ways to import um, directly from some of the e-commerce platforms. And uh, if you're using one of the major platforms, you can look into this and see what kind of options they provide. Let's go out of that there. And there you have it. This is your Google Merchant Center account. You can access it by um, you know, going, searching for Google Merchants and Google, just going to the, the um, same sign-in page that we went to today. Or you can go to your AdWords account, go up to Tools, and click on Google Merchant Center, and it will open up your Merchant Center right there. And uh, you can click on this here and you can see some different information here. Now one thing to note, this is not your full Merchant Center, this is kind of a summary of your Merchant Center, so if you want to actually get to your complete Merchant Center, you do need to go to um, you know, the, the normal sign-in. And right there, there we go. And you'd sign in here, and that's it.